Time of the month for me to try to explain why I thought what I've written for you would be worthy of an article. I didn't expect the trees to come down. I hadn't factored that in. It was not inexpensive to deal with it. So I had to make on the fly changes. That seems to me to be relevant to beekeeping, that you gotta find a tree guy who can tolerate coming in, being around potentially bees with potentially mud, uh, frozen ground, season, Got to be out here right now. If you come later in the year, the bees will be flying. If you come later in the year, I got to move the bees. That's going to be a lot of work. And you got to move the bees back in. I got to have a fence put up. Uh, that's going to trouble, trouble the uh, fence installers. It just goes on and on. I mean, this is re definitely related to bees, but it was not a task that I had factored in. Now the trees are going to come down anyway. I didn't, I didn't know that in the Midwest, specifically here, Ohio, that Colorado blue spruce only lives about 40 years, 42 at the most. Then they die from various diseases almost every time. So had they not come down now, they were going to come down soon. So I discussed that with you. I'm trying to use this and with a degree of confidentiality because I may not be able to pull all this off, I was going to make changes in the yard anyway. I want to do more of this kind of work from the yard where you and I can talk and I may show you bee things and discuss bees from live stream video from my apiary. And then we'll capture some of that and post it later on maybe. I'm intrigued by that, so I was kind of planning to have an increased Wi-Fi signal back there and to add water and energize the barn for electricity, and basically I'm doing all this because I'm not as young as I was, so by, by having access to that, you and I can still talk, and I won't be traveling as much as I used to. So that makes sense to me. Can I do all that? I don't know. But it's intriguing and it keeps me completely interested in my bees and talking about my bees and trying to understand bees and all of this time having these conversations with you. So, stay informed on that. Last fall I had all these swarms and oh, I had three specifically. And I thought at the time this is nonsensical. I still don't know why the bees are doing it but I gave you an update on that. Two of them are dead and one still hanging on by a thread. Just a bit ago, I went out and put dry sugar on them again because that seems to be the best way to feed. So we talked about that. I, uh, I hope it comes through, the colony comes through. I guess if I have these late season swarms again next fall, early winter, well fall, I'll probably try to hive them again. It was a lot of work. It, was, it disrupts everything. You think you got your day planned in the bee yard? You think you got your day planned in life? And there's a swarm hanging there. If you've been keeping bees enough, you know you drop everything and you do what it takes, if you can, to get that swarm. Knowing the whole time it's going to be a pain to keep alive. So I brought you up to date on that. So far, it's one still alive. Uh, you know, no one asked, but I've written in depth about a colony that was aggressive and stung my neighbor and caused great confusion and I had to move it out. I didn't mention that in the article, but that colony at this moment is still alive. I'm sure it needs feeding. I'll go check on that. So that was just a freebie. These late season odd swarms that give me problems are a different aspect of swarming and swarm biology that I've enjoyed getting involved in. So it's an odd time to be talking about swarming, but it's the remnants of last season's swarm issues. So I enjoyed writing it. I enjoyed the photography. I might as well enjoy all the activity with the big truck, big chippers, big chainsaws, young people working, loading, hauling, chipping, staying out of the mud, winches running. It was a lot of fanfare. And as is appropriate, my neighbors kept up with all of that. They're good people. They tolerate me and what I do here. 
but invariably I'm kind of the uh, show that goes on in the backyard. See what he's doing today kind of thing. You must know I appreciate you watching this and going to the trouble to tune in and download it or not download it necessarily, but watch what I'm saying here. I hope it subsidizes my article and some idea of where I was when I put it together. I appreciate you reading it. I appreciate you watching this as usual. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you again next month in this format. Bye-bye.